Hi, and welcome to BuyEveryWord.org. Uh, I'm really glad and excited to be back with you guys for uh, another lesson. Um, it's been it's been a little bit of time since I've done my last lesson. I've been uh, I'm constantly doing writings and that kind of thing and communicating with you guys over uh, Facebook, Twitter, uh, emails, YouTube. So continue up you know with uh, the communication because I love contact with from you guys and uh, you know just um, fellowshipping with you over the internet in that way um, but uh, I've been I've been really busy with studying and uh, just staying in God's word I, I don't I don't ever put a message on unless I just have something that I want to be out there on the internet and I want it to last and I'm telling you, I have so much stuff that I want to put on, but because I am uh, an obsessive compulsive person, I've got to have it just right. It's got to be in a way where I, I, when I look back at it, I can't say, oh, there's a mistake here. Or there's something here that I don't like. And, I, and I'm led by the Holy Ghost in everything that I'm, I preach and that I teach, but uh, it, you know, there are certain details that some some preachers and ministers may skip over because they're just trying to rush something, just to have something to to put on or to talk about. And I just I can't be that way. I've got to be. I've got to make sure that if something happens to me tomorrow, if the Lord decides to to take me, that there isn't anything left out there that someone can say, oh. There's something erroneous about this. I want it to be something that you can read, you can, you can hear, that you can understand, that you can study with, and you can get revelation from God's Word because I've taken so much time to make sure that I've done my part. You know, um, I, I had a preacher this week that was uh, teaching a message in he went to the book of James and he was talking about in James where James said, let there not be many masters among you. He, he, he didn't want there to be a lot of teachers because it, there's greater condemnation that comes on us that teach you because I'm not only responsible for what I say and held accountable for what uh, I, I do and my actions in, in the world, but I am responsible for what I tell you to do and what I teach you to do. So it's a greater condemnation on me if I teach something or if I preach something that is erroneous or filled with errors because um, I, I have to stand, for ju stand in judgment for that because I've taught you the wrong way. So I, am, I don't take it lightly, precious people, that um, what I say has to be what God has guided me in and what the Holy Ghost has guided me in saying. So I don't take it, um, I don't take it lightly. So that being said, I'm, I am glad to be back with you. I hope you can forgive me uh, sometime during this season here in the Southeast. Uh, I have allergies that try to attack me, but um, I'm claiming dominion over that in the name of Jesus. Uh, let me start this first or this next session off a of prayer. Father God, Lord, we just thank you so much for this day. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity. Lord, and for the time of your people, Lord, to, to share my time with me, God, to teach, Lord, from your word. Lord, I just, I'm so thankful, God, for this time, Lord, to, to minister out of your word. And I thank you for this opportunity in the name of Jesus. Lord, I ask you to not let anything that I say, God, be, don't let it be any in any way of my own words, but only as you are teaching me and as you are guiding me, only what the Holy Ghost would speak. Lord, speak unto, my, unto your servant right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Oh, I'm about to pray for these allergies. <laughs> um. Let's look at something here real quick. All right. I want to start off this message with a, um, not really, not really review, but uh, it's basically a, one of the most fundamental things that we have to understand about the Bible. It is, excuse me, it's the most 
fundamental thing that we need to know about the Bible. And we need, the most fundamental thing that we need to know about the Bible is the framework of the Bible. What is the, what is it, the, what is the Word of God the framework for? What is He, the ultimate concept, the ultimate idea, the, the, what is the big picture that, that the Lord is trying to teach us about? You know, we have um, many scholars and people with PhDs and, and doctors and reverends and uh, just any titles you want to name. Many of them are making the Bible com complicated. Uh, they, they like to make it more complex than it is when actually it's very simple. You know, I used to be someone who was very confused and I did not understand many of the things in the Bible. And I put that par partially towards um, me not reading it when I was young. Um, me not reading the Bible for myself. I, I read, but I, a lot of times I would take the preacher's word for it. I'd say, oh, well, you know, this must be what it is. It's, he would teach one thing, but he wouldn't explain something. And I would ask my grandmother questions. Well, you know, why is, why is this this way? And she would say, well, we just, uh, you know, we just won't, some things are a mystery and we just won't go into that. And that always bothered me. And I should have let it bother me more. But um, the most fundamental thing that we need to know, and it's very simple, is the Bible is about a king, a kingdom, and his children. Who are his children? Well, if you go back to my first lesson that I taught on, you'll know that uh, the, kingdom, the kingdom is filled, the kingdom of earth is filled with, uh, with his children. Who is, who is us? Um, if you go back to my first lesson, which was what we lost, you will realize that we, the children, we lost a kingdom. We lost rulership. We fell from dominion. We fell from a place of authority that we had. And that's what we have to realize. And But the good news that Jesus came when, to bring was that he was going to reconcile us to the kingdom. The good news that Jesus brought to us was that the kingdom of heaven had arrived. Now, how can Jesus show up on the scene and say, repent, the kingdom of heaven is at hand? How can he say that it's arrived? How can he say that? Because he was the king. Jesus was the king. And the king had returned to the earth to reconcile his children who were in sin and in rebellion and had fell from their place uh, of authority, fell from their place of rulership because of disobedience, because of rebellion to the king and to the kingdom. He came back to put the kingdom back into man's hands. Praise be to God. Now, 